could expand the circle like slightly more so we don't have so many like back room not sure how far we can expand it oh like that thank you Does it work? Back the microphone? Okay. Welcome. Some chairs left. <laughs> so, as I said before, welcome to this uh, non traditional session. I figured there were so many sessions already that you guys have attended and I'm sure you've all heard enough today. I intended to give a presentation about uh, SEO and we're still gonna talk about SEO, but hopefully I'll do less of the talking and you guys do more of the talking. I have a full set of slides, I have a presentation, I will put it online. You guys can actually check out what I was intended to speak about and you can learn it from the slides. They are pretty heavily noted and I think you can get what I was trying to say from the slides. So let's try to add double value. You can get the slides online and what I want to do here is have a discussion about SEO. I'm sure you guys all are in somewhat related to search engines. Some might know more, some might know less. That's no problem. Um, when we try to use each other's knowledge and try to expand on what we know, perhaps with me as a center man that can explain concepts or that can uh, elaborate on concepts that people are talking about, I'm sure we can help each other find out problems that are actually playing on your websites or issues that you are thinking about, rather than me just giving a high level talk about what Google Penguin or Google Pan uh, Panda does. You guys can help each other or I can help you and solve some actual real life problems rather than explaining abstract concepts that you guys have to look up online and find out how it works. Yeah. Excellent. For me, Yeah. And not that there will be something happen magically in the background where to just give them a first place message that just give them something that they really want to read, something that helps them, something that will be interested, also interesting to be read. And this is for some clients this is very, very hard to explain because they just basically want to do it. They want to have more visitors, Yeah. but I do not want to change anything on the website. Yeah. So if you would have something for this, except for guns, I would be <laughs> happy to hear it. <laughs> so if I hear it correctly, you're asking me for solutions other than creating content that will get their websites ranking higher. No, just to maybe show them in a different way uh, that good content is a good concept and uh, everything else you try to do in the background will just not be as effective. Okay. Is there anyone in the audience that can... Uh, Start. Excellent. Peter, thank you. Besides me. Besides the content on the website, if they don't want to uh, change the content of, of their website, maybe they can hire a developer or I mean a designer uh, to create a nice infographic and add that to the website. Yes. So, uh. <laughs> yeah, okay, I just tried. Um, that would be a good idea with infographics. I do not know if it works for that customer, uh, but basically I'll try to suggest something. So basically I had this, oh, we sh you should write about something. And then he said, no, we have uh, all the plans that we do with the texting and it has to be in a certain way and nothing happens for two years. So. <laughs> okay, I think I can try to elaborate a little bit more on that. Um, he was referring to content and the discussion automatically switched to infographics, which are another form of content. Yeah. Has the client perhaps uh, thought about video or audio content, like the one we're recording right now? Or I, I, I was talking to him with it. Also, he would have enough stuff, actually, he might get involved doing content, but it never really sunk in. Okay. So, 
If I can summarize, the client wants to rank, but refuses to do anything that will make him rank well. I couldn't put it more precisely. <laughs> <laughs> well, at some point, you'll just have to, client, have to tell the client exactly that. That they want to be, yeah, in Dutch. Uh, I, just, uh, I just, <laughs> just need other words to put it, because I did this repeatedly over the last two years. Yeah. Yeah, this is an interesting topic because I will f I think uh, many of you guys out there, especially the, the website integrators, who have faced a similar problem as he is facing right now. You're building a website. You can tell your client that Joomla is a pretty good system for SEO. And they say, no, I want to rank. You build my website and where's my first place on Google? Yeah. Then you start your talks about SEO, about social media, about infographics, about videos, about on-page SEO, off-page SEO. Well, I can throw up like 500 more words, but at some point the client will just either have to hire someone to do SEO for them, like the content type, or not do it. But what your client is trying to do, and I think what many of your clients are trying to do as well, is rank without doing anything. And not paying much either. How is a client, uh, you can put it perhaps in a metaphor, how is a client hoping to sell a book if they refuse to write it? Yeah. Okay. The letters won't magically appear on the, le on, the, on the paper that will allow you to sell the book. Something has to be done in order for Google to actually find your page and for people to yeah. convert. Yeah. Uh -huh. I tried with the front page that one big picture will not be enough. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I'll, I'll try the book image. I hope it works. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Is there perhaps anyone else with a specific question? Or would you like me to explain a little bit about Google Panda and Google uh, Penguin um, so that you guys can elaborate on that further uh, amongst each other? Short question? Oh, yes. Uh, before we um, go to the other stuff, which will interest me too, um, what's your first? I think we'll uh, talk about that more later. Is that okay? No problem. Yeah, sure. Oh, thank you. Um, regarding the panda and penguin, which was the original topic of my uh, talk, so we'll actually touch on that. Uh, the penguin update is the most recent one. Google has launched a penguin update about one week ago. Uh, some of you might have noticed it in traffic on your website or saw some phrases jumping around on Twitter. The Penguin update is actually one of the most influential updates that Google has launched recently and it touches most on uh, the backlink profile that your website has. For example, if you have a lot of backlinks coming from forum comments or from footers, which is an especially common problem with Joomla developers because in the past you could just smack anything in the footer and it would help your website rank. Google Penguin doesn't really like this. The algorithm update that Google launched and so many websites that have used tactics like this in the past, for example, to rank higher on certain phrases that they would use in footers on other websites that link to them. Google Penguin is punishing them for this behavior now and is stating that all links should be earned organically so that the actual person that runs website A consciously decides to link to website B and not a web developer who just smacks on a link in the footer and decides that this website will link to his website. Um, the Google Panda update, the shortest version, make a website that actually means something for your visitors. There are thin websites, uh, thin in the terms of actual quality to your visitors, such as a website that you visit, you look at it, you think, no, that was not what I intended to visit, and you return to the search engine's result pages within seconds. With Google Panda, Google has actually uh, devised algorithms that can figure out what the quality of a website is. They have done this algorithmic, al algorithmically, so there isn't an actual quality measurement. It's not like they can say you score 70% and for every single visitor that you show the website, they will think, wow, this is a pretty good website. They have tried algorithmic ways to figure out how good a website is, and they can now um, 
compare each and every website that I encounter on the internet to their goal and standard of the perfect website. So in the past, you could get away with a lot of backlinks and a high ranking. At this point, your website actually has to mean something for a visitor. Otherwise, at some point, Google Panda will come by and hit your website with um, decimated rankings because um, your website won't perform as well against the Google Panda algorithm. Are there any questions or possible discussion topics that you guys are actually facing regarding either Google Panda or Google Penguin? Uh, no, not necessarily. The difference between Google Panda and Google Penguin, uh, I know, uh, between Google Panda and Google Penguin, they both have. Uh, Panda has 25 releases, and Penguin is in its fourth release right now. So they have different um, strengths, different branches, and the difference is mainly that uh, Penguin is looking at violations of the Webmaster guidelines, and Panda is looking at website quality. And that's the, those are their main approaches, and there are some sub-level approaches that apply as well. I just had very good experiences with uh, uh, the website of my mother. She's the doctor. And I, I, I told her all the time, please write so that just a normal person understands what's happening. Mm -hmm. And what happened over the time that she got a very good ranking. Um, distance part of Germany to her to be treated there yeah. even though there would be somebody right uh, yeah, at, at, their, at their own town mm -hmm. but he just not uh, he appeals with the language so just because uh, the, um, the potential client feels appreciated and understand can mean that he will actually travel last time it was uh, this person drove five hours to get to her and to get the treatment and back, yeah. and she, 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 she told him, uh, why don't you go to somewhere at Bonn, at your hometown? Yeah. But no, he wanted to come to her, but this is just because of the content. Yeah. So if I understand correctly, you're stating that um, the actual content on the website matters so much that people are prepared to drive long distances just to visit her. Just to highlight that content isn't just yes. something you write for the search engines, but has actual yes. value to your visitors. Right. Yeah. What is, what is the high ranking if it does not trigger a reaction? Exactly. So, um, to brighten it out to the entire audience, he has just stated a method that will actually increase your conversion rate, the way in which uh, your website is triggering people to take a desired action. Is there perhaps anyone else who wants to share a way they have devised how to increase their conversion rate, how to get more signups or um, increase the amount of newsletter subscriptions or more. Yeah. Um, what this man is stating is that uh, you could perhaps use a way to find out where a visitor is located. Um, browsers such as Safari and I think uh, Chrome will actually let you locate a visitor that isn't necessarily on a mobile device and use that information to actually target uh, your website to a visitor. For example, if you're from Chicago and you're trying to visit the website about uh, Apple, Apple can tell you about the nearest Apple store in Chicago and that might actually increase your conversions. Anyone else? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought found out uh, at, at least it worked for, 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 for doctors that it's uh, more important for them to have a good and understanding content mm -hmm. than fancy images. But this may be just for, for, for health things, yeah. medical things. May not be necessarily transferable. Okay. So um, written content over fancy images. In this case, yeah. Uh, and on uh, other products, most probably it will not work. But on this case, on a medical basis, yeah. basis, yeah. How do other people think about that? Will ma uh, text matter more than images, or? Yeah. Yeah. 
Exactly, those were my thoughts as well. Um, looking at text, yeah. For example, a travel website. Sorry? For example, a travel website. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it. <laughs> in the end, it would be both an original approach. You could make it like a mystery painting website, but I'm. I don't think you were referring to that. Then again, uh, without the text, there would be little chance of Google finding your website. So if you could, for example, mention that it was a Renaissance painting or it was painted by a Renoir or those are keywords that actually make Google find your painting website and the images will perhaps sell them better than the words about these images. Yeah, cool. Can I share the video? Of course. <coughs> Take the mic. Oh, okay. Uh, about clients. Many times they don't understand how Google reason, and so they could be very uh, difficult to convince that uh, CEO stuff is a difficult thing, an expensive thing also. And I spent some time trying to uh, to make the <coughs> make them think about uh, uh, how works Google. So I asked them. Uh, who do you think uh, is the the client of Google? Mm -hmm. So they think a little bit about it, and then they respond correctly. The client of Google is the people. So Google wants to 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 make it work the model of business to sell advertisement. Have to be always correct in giving you the best result. So you have to provide a value content. They understand it. And they, at that point, they know that they have to spend or money giving you the possibility to create a, a, a great copywriting or investing themselves in creating great contents. Is it clear with my... <laughs> Uh, horrible English, <laughs> anyway. That was great. That's good. Yeah. Is there anyone else who wants to reply on that? Or like yeah, thank through? you. Peter? Uh, yeah. My health training. Uh, something else which uh, is important when you talk with clients. Um, uh, some clients don't know that if they are logged in at Google, uh, that it will affect their search results. Um, a couple of years ago I had this client and when I was talking to him that we should migrate his website to I think it was 1.6 back then he said and I told him about search engine optimization he said ah we don't need that because we rank number one so I asked well I, w I thought maybe he uses his domain name but he actually he used some um, keywords for his website so I did the same I tried this keywords I couldn't find him maybe on page three or so so then it appeared that he was locked in, and I asked him to log out, and then it became silent. <laughs> now, those were uh, two very interesting uh, matters that were brought up. Uh, first off, there was you, who actually... Dario. Uh, Daniel, sorry. Dario. 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 First off, it was Dario, who stated that uh, the end customer of Google is a human, is a visitor. Google is not your end client. Uh, it was actually a slide in my presentation, so it was uh, very closely related to uh, what I had intended to uh, speak about myself. If you're creating great content and you're providing good value to your visitors, Google will love your, your, your website. Because in the end, all that Google cares about is people reusing their product. If you search on Google for uh, a glass of water, a water glass, and you can't find a glass on a website you encounter, you are less likely to use Google again on your next search. Whilst on the other hand, if you find a website that compares 10 different types of water glasses and has great filters that will actually lead you to buy a set of water glasses, you are more likely to use the search engine again and therefore be faced with more of Google's ads and therefore Google earns more money. 
It is in Google's benefit to serve visitors the best possible website. They don't really care what kind of website it is or what brand is hosting the website. They just want to maximize the chances of somebody visiting a website, having a pleasant search experience and researching again on Google. And what Peter brought up was the... Um, Peter brought up the personalization, exactly. The personalization of search results. This is something that is indeed very less known, especially under people that don't really care about search engine optimization. Uh, these days, it's almost impossible to get two people to see the set, to, to see, to get two people to see the two sets of same search results. In fact, if either one of you would were to get his uh, telephone out and would search on the exact same search phrase, I think there would, wouldn't be a single identical set of people, even though you are physically all in the same geolocation. So Google is very likely to push restaurants nearby or businesses nearby or uh, businesses in Dutch because you are in Holland. Um, and um, there are more effects, uh, more factors that affect this. For example, the Google Plus. Once you're logged in on Google+, Plus, Google+, Plus actually starts remembering more and more about your preferences. And they actually target some websites that aren't necessarily super interesting, but somehow um, one of your Google+, Plus contacts has listed one of these websites in their circles. So that website gets a boost. If you have that person in your circle and you don't, you will have um, that website ranking on place free and you won't probably see the result ranking at all. There are so many of these factors um, playing in Google search results these days that you can't really talk about a number one ranking anymore. It's more like an average number one ranking for all the people that we can test about. Um, this makes a search result so generic, so fluid, so dynamic that you should really use professional tools if you want to actually say something about the ranking of your website rather than just checking it yourself every day. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, you are still using probably the same IP address, uh, the same computer, uh, different browsers, but Google also uses that kinds of information. You're right, but this would be even harder, and I'm fed up with uh, every five minutes just uh, requiring requiring another IP address. So. <laughs> For example, Peter indeed ma mentioned uh, the possibility of using proxy servers. Uh, I think the easiest solution to most of the issues you're describing would be to use an incognito version of your browser. So the, the, the porno mode of uh, Chrome or Opera or I think every browser has one these days. It allows you to browse anonymously or at least something that relates to anonymi an an anonymity. No? Anonymity? Being anonymous relates to being anonymous um, if you enable that mode Google won't have you logged in at Google Plus uh, it won't actively remember your search history it will actually remember it but it won't remember it in your browser itself and it will uh, risk uh, lower the risk of actually being influenced by Google's results interesting question though why do you don't want Google to remember what you searched before after all it's your search history and you probably are helped by the fact that Google is remembering it for you. Uh, most, of, uh, most of the time if I do a search like this, I want to see how certain criteria rank and then a personalized thing will not really help me that much, as you mentioned earlier. Uh, the thing is that um, I don't think you can actually influence that enough by using any other browser or any other IP address. Like Peter mentioned, Google is logging so much information about every search you do that I think you need professional tools to actually be able to say something uh, worth relevance if you want to uh, say something about your rankings. Mm -hmm. with this search, with this keyword. 
and they pull down mm -hmm. <laughs> from the sky. Yeah. Very, very common. It's useful to another time to, to sell your service. Yeah. Uh, what you mean is like you could use the effect and actually go to a customer and say you're rank number one? Yeah, because many customers think that they are on top. Ah, so like that. They search all the time with the same yeah, yeah. Uh, browser, the same ID, and uh, all is customized to, to find their website mm -hmm. in the first division or in the first place, for example. Yeah. And many times, there with their browser, their computer, with a keyword that they want. Mm -hmm. They search all the time. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they want to be number one. Here at the first, first place. So I go there. No, no, no. Just, just, no, this is just very perfect. Because I experienced it so often that a person just went to Google to get to their own website. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people are doing that a lot. They do not do it in the normal status thing to enter their URL, they, they go to Google, Google and enter there, and, and that's the reason first. why they are yeah. always number one. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, we can what kind of tools do you uh, prefer to uh, look for uh, general salespeople? Uh, that's a great question. Um, Nico is asking me uh, what kind of tools I prefer to use in terms of SEO in general. Is there anything specific you'd like to uh, discuss? Okay, in general. Um, well, for starters, there are hundreds and hundreds of tools out there. Some have uh, elite enterprise super packages that rank uh, that cost over like five thousand dollars a month. Some of them are free, which is more applicable in this case, I presume. Um, I myself, I use mostly the SEO Moss uh, suite, which was renamed last name last week to the Moss suite, but perhaps that's a detail. Um, what you can do with their suite is like an entire range of search related uh, solutions. You can check for the keyword difficulty for a keyword, for example. If I want to know how difficult it is to rank for uh, Apple computer in Holland on Google.nl, it analyzes the top 10 of results and it gives me a keyword score. For example, I think Apple computers would be like 80%. And a keyword like uh, Apple computer uh, VGA connector would have a less uh, lesser density score because there were less people competing for that keyword. Another option would be a rank checker. It was uh, part of the keyword suite as well. You can set it for specific domains or for specific keywords and it will generate a report for you or it will monitor the search results for a given keyword. So for example, if you're into uh, remote controls and you want to sell them in Holland, you just put in your website and it will automatically uh, give you a keyword report every week for how your website is ranking for the search phrase remote control. It actually offers a lot of features. It is um, The pro version is, I think the cheapest one is $100 a month, but they offer a lot of free features as well that are like limited to the first five results or um, such as that. Another interesting one uh, that's built by the same company is opensiteexplorer.org. Often when you're developing a website for someone or you're trying to acquire a link from them or you're just starting any kind of business relationship with another company, you feel like knowing a little bit more about their website. Is it a good quality? Uh, are people linking to them? What people are linking to them? If you go to opensiteexplorer.org and you enter the URL of the partner you're looking into, it actually gives you a quality report of how well uh, the website is linked, what kind of websites are linking to it, um, what kind of social media profiles, what kind of coverage do they have in social media or in news. It's like a, an analyzer for a website URL. There are a lot of them, but I like using this one. It uses data that will uh, show you how well a website is ranking. Um, let's try this. Let's try bring this a little bit closer to home. Uh, we're here on a Joomla conference, and I don't think I've used used the word Joomla yet in this uh, discussion. So I might try to start that. Um, is there anything one of you guys would like to see improved in Joomla SEO? I'm not going to fix it, but we can at least discuss it to see um, what kind of things are missing right now. Is there anyone who would like to uh, share? Peter. Um, 
maybe uh, the, I, I don't think it can be approved because it has a reason that it's there. Uh, the URL structure uh, shows your uh, article number. Uh, if it's not there, maybe it's better, but uh, you can't. Uh, I think the system ne needs it, so. Uh, the website was open site explorer.org. Uh, Peter uh, just mentioned the URL structure as a possible change for um, a Joomla SEO. Uh, the content ID that is mentioned in it is indeed used by the system to. Uh, fetch a different ID from the database. I think there are tools. I think SH404 Ceph is able to uh, re rewrite your URLs based on what you currently have and you can put in your own custom URLs. I must say I'm not a big fan of all these SEO suites that are out there. Even for me they have so many options that I don't literally don't know what half of them do. So I'm really curious about how people that are less known to SEO um, handle these kind of situations. But perhaps there's only three or four or five options that you need and you can uh, use a tool like that to uh, get the results that you want. Or if you know very specifically what you want, perhaps there's a tool on the jet or a custom tool that you can write that does specifically that what you want it to do. Cool. Is there anything else missing in Joomla SEO? Or perhaps it's just fine right now? Mm. Yeah. I like just to have a reminder if I forget to set a meta description. Because if I do a link to, to my Google Plus profile mm -hmm. or whatever, just oh, get new content out there, some of the times I just forget it and then I'm just sitting there and wondering what kind of text is being suggested by Google because this is not the thing which I really like to show up there and which will be also shown up on the search. <coughs> mm -hmm. It's just just maybe just a personal thing like ping Frank you forgot mm -hmm. to enter some decent text there. Yeah. I think there's tools out there that do that. Uh, maybe not exactly in the content area where it actually tells you to do that. But there's the tool called SEO Boss. I think it's an extension for uh, Joomla. It's in the jet. And it actually uh, gives you an overview of all the meta descriptions and I think meta keywords and meta titles for all your content. Oh, yeah, yeah. So rather than having to click on each and every single content item to view whether you've set your uh, meta description, you can see it in one giant overview and tweak it from there. Oh, there are also other tools out there that you can do it. Okay, cool. Peter? Cool. Yes, I can. Um, let's start with the meta description. Uh, you can enter a global meta description in Joomla in your uh, global configuration. I recommend not setting that one because if you set the meta description in the global configuration and like Frank, you forget to set a specific meta description in a lower area, it will actually use the global meta description for that specific page. There's no way you can write a meta description that will cover all the pages you didn't set a specific meta description for. So if you just keep it blank in the global description, in the global configuration, it will use a meta description uh, just as uh, Frank referenced from that specific page. For example, if you have a page about uh, remote controls and you forgot to set uh, the expect meta description for that page, Google will just crawl the content and try to find a phrase that is related to the search uh, query for remote control and show that as your meta description rather than your overly generic meta description that you would otherwise get. Otherwise, it is wise to set a meta description for pretty much each and every page that you can. Of course, limited by your uh, personal resources you shouldn't set a meta description for your 20,000 articles that are on your page you should get tools to do that however if you have only 
50 articles on your page, it wouldn't hurt to actually have a specific meta description for each and every one of those 50 articles. The more interesting one, the meta keywords. Let's try a show of hands. Who has used meta keywords or said it in the last year? Those are not many people that have used meta keywords. Why? Yeah. And could you explain? Could you explain how this relates to the question? But uh, yeah, therefore I needed the, the, the meta keywords. Otherwise, I do not. And on, on other pages. Yeah. Because of this generation. Okay. So you have a specific example of how you have used the meta keywords in an yeah, not really correct way to use a system specific function for you. Yeah. The thing is, um, currently uh, Google has officially stated that they're not using meta keywords in any search related way, except for to check for when to uh, give penalties to people that are overly using their meta descriptions. I'm not sure whether your website is a candidate for that because I don't necessarily think you've overused it. Of course, now with Joomla 3.1, you can actually use the tagging component, so you don't have to abuse the meta keywords tag anymore. Well, mis misuse. Um, that is indeed correct. Um, this is a common misconception about the meta description. Whatever you enter there will not increase your rankings for that keyword. Shall we try someone else? <laughs> now I, I appreciate your contribution, but there are a lot of people in the in the audience, perhaps uh, too shy to actually raise their hand over yours. Is there anyone? Thank you. That's a good one. Um, Yeah. Uh, is there two different URLs to arrive to this article? Um, I don't think so. I'll try to elaborate on that. Uh, for the record, uh, the question was whether uh, if you've tagged an article with two different tags, will it generate two different uh, URLs for that specific article? Um, I think the short question is, I better hope not, <laughs> because if it were, a lot of sites would get in trouble for this. I'm very much hoping that Elin was smart enough to realize this and figure out that uh, tags do not influence the URL. They are, um, I think they're creating different URLs on some other place of the website. For example, if you have uh, a tag glass and a tag chair, it would create a page on your website like uh, example.org slash tag slash glass and example.org slash tag slash chair. But I don't think a tagging an article will actually uh, infect your URL in any way. Because otherwise it would mess up your website pretty fast if you're tagging an article with, say, 10 different tags. It would become a mess very quickly. So uh, actually, I uh, reasoned it out. No, it won't affect your uh, articles. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Nej, no, no problem. Ja. 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 Um, the question was uh, when two articles are approachable via two different when one article is approachable via two different URLs, how do you uh, solve this problem? Uh, the common solution would be to use a canonical tag. Uh, Google, Bing and Yahoo have released a specific meta tag. It's called a rel canonical. And it actually solves the exact problem that you're referencing. Um, basically, you're saying to the search engines, okay, so you found this article and this is the URL I want linked to it. And if they found your other way of approaching the article, for example, via a tag or via your search engine or via the multi-category URL, it's still saying, oh, this is the article I want to use. This is the URL you should link to this article. This is where all the page values should flow to. The thing is, Joomla hasn't really conquered that uh, hurdle yet. And as of now, I don't think there's a suitable solution, even in the JET, that uh, permanently handles canonicalization. And this is a sad thing because it's been bugging Joomla for ever now. And in the past there weren't solutions, so fair enough, they didn't solve it. But the canonical tag solves this really well, tests have shown. But I don't think there's any solution in Joomla that will let you add a canonical tag to your website. So you might keep an eye open for when somebody actually figures out how to properly add canonicalization to Joomla URLs. But currently I don't think it's a problem that can properly be solved, unfortunately. Is there anyone else with a specific question, for example, about their own website uh, regarding SEO? That's a lot of hands. You're next, by the way. Yeah. It's not necessarily bad. It's not good either because it's in a score of 100. Uh, it pretty much depends on how much work you've put into actually uh, becoming an authority in your field and getting backlinks and creating top quality content. And uh, if you've been working really hard on that, I would say it's bad. And if you've just let it flow and just try to create some content or some social connections, it's not necessarily bad. But if you want to rank really high for competitive keywords, it's something you definitely need to improve in terms of how many links you have or the quality of the links to your website. Sure. No, that website can't tell you what's wrong. And unfortunately, I don't think any website can tell you properly what's wrong at the moment. Um, Usually it's a combination of multiple factors. For example, the amount of backlinks that you have or the quality of backlinks that you have. Uh, there might even be some structural problems on your website itself that prevent it from ranking high. But in most cases, it's actually the quality of your backlinks or the uh, amount of backlinks that you have to your website. Yeah. It's not often black and white in SEO. It's uh, should you remove that? Probably not unless they are causing you troubles. Then again, if you have like thousands of footer links spread across a lot of websites, I think Google Penguin will catch up on you and will punish you for that. So you should use your own judgment or hire someone who do the judgment for you that will actually see whether one backlink is better than the other. And for example, use the new Google disavow tool to actually tell to Google, okay, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I once put in that footer link and that's now on 12,000 different pages of domain x.com. I would really like you to not look at that footer link again. I've tried to contact the webmaster, they refuse to remove it, but I don't make it count, just forget about it. And that way you can tell Google to not use that link anymore. Uh, pull it slightly broader, um, the use of footer links in general, or in fact any link that you can acquire for free in a very short time, is probably a link that you don't want anymore. Those were the links that in the past were amazing. You would go uh, commenting on blogs, you would go uh, forum signatures, you would contact a thousand and one web developers hoping that they would smack a link on it somewhere. 
I would advise against that because at some point Panda or Penguin will catch up on your super secret linking scheme and punish you for it. Any other specific questions? The good alternative? Yeah. Um, as Frank mentioned uh, earlier, the good alternative is to create top quality content. I know. Uh, basically, yes. The, of course, the situation is more complicated than that. Um, what you should start is by creating a website that is capable of ranking high. That sounds very vague, but uh, there's pretty tools out there that can check whether your website is crawlable by search spiders, whether it's not too heavy to load, whether it's loading well on a mobile devices. With that as a basis, you can actually start expanding uh, your reach and for example, build up your social media profile. Okay. Um, let's try a use case. What branch is the client in? What? Um, okay, wine. It, so, is core business is wine tasting or selling or? Okay. So. His client is in wine tasting. Is there anyone who has a great idea that his client could produce content about that is low effort and high value? Frank. I just know uh, we have a, a site with whiskey in Germany and, and they just do it on a regular basis. They do YouTube videos and just kind of public tasting. So he's just sitting there tasting it, describing it, mm -hmm. just with about the history. And you build up over the time Mm -hmm. And so that they just got it on their regular schedule and they get huge numbers of, of visitors. Which yeah, but all of the people. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, that could be another. <laughs> no, it's, it's a great idea. It's low effort because they already have the knowledge about these wines. They are probably already doing these tastings every week anyway. So why not put a camera up and put on some makeup and make a good YouTube movie about it? Yeah. Whiskey barrel, then you get the bottle there, the nosing glass. Behind him, you always tell sometimes that the color of the whiskey yeah. actually that behind me is green. Yeah. <laughs> so so I, got, I got a page here so you can see actually the, the, the color. And it tastes like mm -hmm. whatever. Cool. So about eight minutes, nine minutes. That's it. Nico. Another thing is maybe a blogging for, uh, about what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He's a good writer, I think. I put it on the website, but you don't get that many visitors there. But the content, the content is there. Yeah. But sometimes you just also have to give it a little time. So it, it sounds like this client has tried it for some time now? Six, six, six months. Okay. And has he, um, how, how has he tried to promote the content? Is there. Uh, But he's promoting it offline for now. Offline. Okay. Uh, has he considered, like indeed, a Twitter or a Facebook profile? He's not that technical the same. Yeah, yeah. Just a second. Just a second. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Um, uh, that sir is asking how important it is to actually have links from social profiles or linking on. Uh, that's actually a very debated matter at the moment, how uh, big the influence of social media is on your actual ranking of your website. Um, I think it is an important part of how uh, your website is ranking, but it's not a critical part. Currently, Google is focusing mainly on backlinks, there's links from other websites that are linking to yours. And I think it's starting to use data from uh, social media profiles, mainly their own Google Plus social media platform. Unfortunately, they don't really have non-public access to either the Twitter stream or the Facebook data. So the two largest social networks in the world do not provide decent data about rankings for websites. That's probably why Google is pushing Google Plus super hard. It's almost impossible not to get a Google Plus profile for anything you're doing these days. 
because of your signing up for Gmail, I think you'll automatically have a Google Plus profile, even though you most likely not want it nor ever use it. But that's not their problem. They can track you and they can advise you with super personal um, tips once you've signed up for your Gmail. And just a second. Uh, in short, I don't think it matters that much in terms of ranking, but in terms of outreach and influence and actual attention for your website, it's major importance. If you have a well followed uh, Twitter profile or a Facebook with a lot of likes, you increase your reach exponentially. And um, once you publish a blog and you can put it on your Facebook, like we've got our latest uh, wine tasting online. It's the Wednesday session of week 23. And oh my God, look at this. We have an exclusive uh, Pinot Noir uh, in this episode. A lot more people will see it. So the chances of actually somebody linking to your website, for example, with their own wine blog or with their own Facebook page, they can increase the uh, outreach of your product. But it doesn't necessarily influence your actual rankings. I don't think a well followed Twitter profile actually has any influence on the uh, rankings of your website currently. Yeah. Uh, the, the official statement that Google is still hanging on to is that they don't use Google Analytics data for a website to actually look at how well a website is performing. It's one of those myths I'm still not sure about who or what to believe because Google would have such enormous value in actually having a peek at that data. But they keep consistent, consistently either lying about it or saying about it what it really is but i'm still not sure however uh, currently they're tracking their search engine result pages and they are actually seeing which websites are clicked on more and which websites are visited longer so google will try to push uh, important pages on your website up for example uh, with the site links that are uh, under your some of your results if you are searching for remote control and there are three super popular models on your website that everybody visits Google will slowly start pushing these three specific models as size links under your results. Sir. Uh, a couple of minutes ago you mentioned that Google just about to. Yeah. I read some, I can't remember where, that people can use, the competition can use the just about to against you to destroy good backlinks. Is yeah. That true? Uh, no, uh, the disavow tool is currently the most mythical tool in the Google webmaster uh, empire. I think there are, uh, sorry? Uh, oh, sorry, I'll, I'll take a step back and explain the, the Google Disavow tool. A couple of months ago, uh, Google released a tool. It's called the Google Disavow tool. And it basically lets you tell Google that you don't want a certain backlink to count. For example, if you had like a shady SEO provider that got you a thousand backlinks from some kind of third world country that you don't really want to link to your website anymore, you can use the Disavow tool to tell Google, I'm very sorry. I would please not want to use this tool anymore. Um, regarding that first question, um, I don't think you can actually manage to do this on a large enough scale to have an influence. Google has super smart algorithms that can detect whether or not a link to a certain website is valid. And the Google Webmaster tools are set up in a way that you can only disavow links for your own website, for your own account. For your own account. So somehow you should use as a, a super large number of accounts to discredit an entire website and then in turn you could di discredit the links from that website to the actual target website. I think it's doable actually but it would require enormous resources that you can far better spend on improving your own website rather than trying to kill someone in your competition. The clock says that I... Uh. Done! Thanks for your attention, everyone. If you want templates, you can go to themepartner.com. If you need SEO advice, you can contact me or find me on Twitter or anything. Thanks.